Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the Old Jarhead here. And today we are gonna push another power station. In my last video, I was using my Opus Mega One with a 48 volt XENY golf cart LiPo 4 battery. And during that testing, it actually peaked at 720 watts. Now, one of the things that I wasn't able to show in my last video was that the Opus Mega One actually shut down the solar port when it was trying to draw over 13 amps. Now it's rated at 13 amps, but I calculated the 720 watts it was pulling at about 13 and a third amps. At the same time, I was also running my ceramic heater, which can draw over 1100 watts. Now during that testing, the Opus Mega One actually shut down. After it shut down, I went ahead and disconnected the heater and it started charging back up again and it went right back up to 685 watts. That was fine. But I thought about it and I thought I must have been pushing that little power station a little too hard. Now it's a 1048 watt hour battery with a, I think it's a 2000 watt inverter. But I think that drawing over 700 watts, just over 13 amps of power off of this battery, at the same time it was trying to provide a lot of wattage to that heater, it got a little too hot. The fans were running really high and it shut down. Now my thoughts on that are, Look, you're not gonna push these power stations like that. If you're running a fridge or freezer or TV or something just to keep going during an outage, you're not gonna be drawing a thousand watts off of it while you're also trying to charge it up because quite frankly, they're just not designed for that. But I thought, well, I wonder if a bigger power station like my Pecron E1500 LFP power station, which has a 1500 watt hour battery, would it handle that or would it also shut down? So we are going to try that today. So let's see if the Pecron can handle that kind of draw at the same time it's providing that much power to a ceramic heater. Let's go ahead and fire this up and see what happens. All right, here we go. So we are at 56%. It's already turned on. I'm gonna send power over to the Pecron. So here we are, we're pulling 678 watts. Now this unit can take 32 to 95 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the AC on and we're just gonna go straight to pushing it here, 689. So we're getting a lot of, of power off of it. Now, as soon as I turned the AC on, I did see it drop to 600 and then pop back up to 688. So it's pulling 688. We're gonna plug in this heater. <laughs> And we're gonna see what happens, folks. Now that heater is on full blast. Now the one thing that I noticed was that it did drop the solar slightly, but then it picked it right back up again. All right, I've got my LCD readout here. It's telling me that I'm pulling almost 12 amps. It's getting 600 watts, and it's putting out over 900 on that heater right there. Boy, I can feel the heat coming off of it too. You can hear it. And you can see it's pulling close to a thousand watts already, but we're still getting 580-ish. And if you look here, we're still pulling around 11 amps, 11.22 right there. So it'll be interesting to see if it just keeps going. It's down about 100 watts, and I think that's because of the power that's driving the inverter in order to drive that guy right there. That's kind of normal, I think. We are getting some pass-through on it though, so it is charging. At the same time, it's actually depleting. So we're, we're bringing in over 500 watts. We're putting out over 1100 watts. It has not shut down. It's still running. Well, it's getting warm. I'm gonna turn this heater away from us because it's getting me warm. Look at that, 1130. Getting 1133, 34. Now this is the XENY 48 volt golf cart battery. It actually has a built-in fire suppression or fire extinguisher system. It is a steel battery. This is all steel, folks. This battery is actually vibration resistant. It's a, I think it's two millimeter thickness. It says 2.0 thickness steel plate, IP67 rated, vibration resistant comes with a charger, a thousand watt charger. And we're still running here, folks. We've dropped down to 54%, but we're still running. We've definitely outrun the Opus Mega One now at the rate that we're pulling. So I'm kind of impressed by the Pecron. Fans are running, but they're not real loud. 
1140 watts. You'll have to excuse my wiring mess. I just threw this together to make this work. We've got my switch, which gives me a voltage readout. I have noticed the voltage readout isn't identical. This one says 52.5, that one says 52.7. But it is nice to have that readout, and it allows me to turn it on and off. I'm running a 30 amp inline fuse. That's between the battery after the switch and the Pecron. 1140 watts, we're going out there to that heater, 1145, look at that folks, 1149. Now I am going to call that test good. I'm going to shut off this heater. Get that out of the way. And now, let's see what happens. Now as soon as I shut that off, look what happened here. We got up to 688 watts coming in. There's 685. It is showing that we're now pulling 13.23 amps. That's pretty awesome, folks. Now, I haven't seen the Pecron pull over 700 like I did with the Opus Mega 1, so I find that interesting. Well, folks, I have to say I'm impressed with the Pecron. I think that this is really pushing things a lot harder than you really need to. But I do find it interesting that the Pecron did a couple things that were different than the Opus Mega 1. It actually cranked up the amperage that it was drawing off the battery and got up to 720 watts. That actually triggered it to shut down. So I find that interesting. I think it's important to note that with that Opus, if you're trying to draw over a thousand watts for an extended period, the charge controller does try to actually draw a lot more power out of it. Whereas the Pecron, when it started to push out over 1100 watts to that heater, it actually ramped down the MPPT charge controller to just under 11 amps and about 580 watts. Maybe that's why it didn't get too hot and shut down versus the Opus, which I think it got a little hot and it shut down. Now the Opus did fire right back up as soon as I turned off the inverter and it worked fine. So if you had a unit that was drawn a thousand watts and then it dropped off and back down to 150 like a refrigerator, then it's not gonna do that. But definitely for a, an extended period of time, trying to draw that much power out of a unit like that, it's probably just not designed for it. And I don't really think any of these power stations, these small ones are really designed to do that. This one, on the other hand, seemed to protect itself, which I thought was pretty impressive. Anytime using a battery like this, you're going to have to charge it up. But the nice thing about that is that this unit does come with a 1,000 watt battery charger. So if you've got a generator, maybe just a 2,000 watt generator that can sustain a 1,000 watts over an extended period, if you'd completely depleted this battery in five hours, you could have it charged back up. This battery here is $2,000 and you might think, well, why the heck do I want to spend $2,000 when I could spend half that and get just as much power? Well, I will tell you that there is a big difference between those plastic batteries and this one. This one is a very, very heavily built battery that comes with the charger, comes with the display, has that fire suppression system built into it, which LiPo 4s are very stable, but it is nice having that. Of course, it's done for golf carts, so if you get into an accident, it's got fire suppression, that would be good. But it's a steel case. This is a beast. Nothing's going to hurt this thing. It's IP67 rated. If it gets a little wet, it's going to be okay. That's pretty impressive. And of course, you know, those other batteries, they're, they're lighter and easier to move. This one is 105 pounds. But I can set this battery up on a shelf near where my power station is and have a considerable amount of power to run through an outage if I have one. Or quite frankly, I could take this battery and install it in my cabin and run my cabin on this battery by itself. Though honestly, I'd put two of them in and run, it, run two of them instead of what I have today. Now I will drop a link down below to this battery as well as the Pecron power station. I think it's a good power station as well. I've got several. This one is my go-to outdoors type power station because of the rubber handles and the rubber corners. It's more rugged, has a little more power. I like this unit quite a bit. Anyway, folks, so there you have it. This Pecron E1500 LFP performed well under this heavy testing. I'm impressed with it. I've had it for several months now. I use it to go to my cabin quite a lot. It's actually one of my favorite power stations.
Anyway, folks, let me know what you think down in the comments. I check every comment and I try to answer all of them. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for watching. Meanwhile, I'm going to drop another video right here for you to check out. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.